Ich werde Hannah Kruth. Good morning, Gilbert in English. Much easier to pronounce, Gilbert. Yeah. Sure. Thank you for coming and welcome to Hong Kong. Yeah, I, I really like, not only I like Hong Kong as a city, but uh, the gallery is beautiful and I really appreciate to be here. Yeah, it's quite an honor for us here at Blue Lotus Gallery to be okay. showing your work. Um, and also to be able to talk to you in person and hear the background um, of these amazing photographs mm -hmm. and your life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I want to start first with asking you, um, how did you discover photography and how did you happen to get into becoming a rock yeah. photographer? Uh, that's two different things. Uh, I was 13 and I borrowed the camera of my mother, a big black box, 120, 120 film type. And uh, I got interested and started to take photos. And when I was 15, I bought my own camera, uh, a Japanese one. And started, I got interested, started to see uh, work of other photographers and got my preferences already. And uh, <laughs> I remember when I was 18, I uh, went to a, a night concert of John Coltrane, and I was an amateur at the time. But uh, I took a photo as an amateur, and it is here, uh, hanging wow. around. So uh, there must have been some talent, so to say. <laughs> was that was that your first uh, photograph of a, a concert, That's a live concert? Yeah, yeah. No, I did some more. This concert was in Amsterdam, and I was living in Utrecht. And there was a jazz seller, and I did some. That was my first work, um, jazz artist. So that was what happened. What was interesting, of course, I also did uh, took photos of um, girls and cars and so <laughs> <laughs> architecture as well. Yeah. But you had a passion for music to start. No, with? no, for, not when I started. I started actually in uh, only. 20, when I was 22 or 23, um, and it was more or less by occasion that uh, it was music. I was uh, had an internship with a very well-known Dutch photographer where I learned a lot, especially about technique, uh, printing photos and uh, developing a film in the, in the right way, so you could, can push it if there's low light conditions. Okay. And, what was he? What, what kind of photography was he? He doing? was especially well known in, with portraits, and I learned to, I learned to saw how, how he did it. Um, and he had an assignment to do for for a radio, for a TV uh, a magazine, to do a Dutch rock group, The Outsiders. And he said, I'll take also photos. And with one of those photos, I went to. Uh, friend from school who was working in Amsterdam for a Dutch underground uh, newspaper writing about music. And the photo was never published actually, but from that moment we started to write for daily magazines, daily uh, uh, newspapers. They started to, to write about for, for a youth page every Saturday. And, they, and the rock scene was kind of starting and all of a sudden, more, you can say, exploding. All the American groups came uh, over from America, England, to, to Europe to play. And that was the period of time that uh, they made their first and second albums and did, their and did also their first tour to, to Europe. And for them it was also very important to, to be concentrated and do, do the be their best to get famous. So that's so it was really in the beginning of their careers. Yeah. As so well. did people already know them, or were they completely fresh off the block? Well, I remember, for instance, the Eagles. No, nobody knew them, and they they recorded their second album, I think, in in London, and I, I was there when they were recording it, and and they they were invented in in England more, I think, than in than in the U.S. For them, it was also a great time. And you were there, yeah. <laughs> every step of the way. Yeah. Um, what? So you talked a little bit about learning these techniques um, with this photographer. What was his name that you studied Philip, with? Philip Mechanicus. Another yeah. difficult Dutch. name to pronounce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so when you were photographing all these live concerts and uh, also interviews, as I understand, you wanted mm -hmm. to do many, many interviews, 
what are the conditions um, for that and what are the challenges, yeah. but also maybe the unique things that you can take in those conditions that you can't in, in other um, ways of times of photographing. Uh, the difference uh, at that time it was I could do uh, when a concert is uh, one half hour I could take photos during the whole concert and that's what I did and also with interviews which is usually the journalists don't like that but I insisted to be there during the whole interview okay. and uh, that helped for me to to have a chance to go on and, and concentrate on taking as good as possible photos. So, um, so, so time, you're saying that you had yeah, a lot of time yeah, and that yeah. made the difference. Yeah. Is it different today for Yeah, for now you have, uh, uh, you're, if you are allowed to take photos for with concerts, you have three, the first three uh, songs. Wow. And that is when the show starts, you know, the, the, the excitement comes at the end and not at the beginning. That's one difference. And another difference is that there's ten times much more light, so you don't have to push your films, actually it's digital now. So. That's all, all different. No, atom, no zoom lens, no uh, automatic focusing. I mean, it was different. <laughs> yeah. Where were you on the stage? Were you literally on stage no, with them? Or? Uh, in, usually in front. Okay. Sometimes on stage in the, in the coulisses, in, you know, at the side. No, and, um, uh, but usually, preferably in front, in, yeah, between, between the audience and the stage. Fantastic. Um, and sitting here, you're surrounded by all these photographs you took during that time in the series from Abba to Zaba. You literally did photograph yeah, from, from, Abba, Z, yeah. from A to Z. Yeah. Um, so what, when, you, when you first arrived here and you see all these photos again, what, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's a bit difficult to say. I, actually, I like, I like uh, the work I did. <laughs> <laughs> good. Uh, I mean, some photos, I, I, I think, you know, this is a selection, of course, I made 100,000, uh, I have more than 100,000 negatives. And these are the best, and I think they're, you know, I'm, uh, they're not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Do they feel like family to you? I mean, no, after you've no. seen them so many that's, times? Uh, that's, uh, People say, oh, you, all, you met all those uh, uh, people. Says, of course, I met them. You know, to take photos, you, you meet somebody. And, but I not, I didn't become friends with them. That's, actually, I'm a bit shy person. So uh, the journalist did the talking, and I preferred to hide behind the camera or behind a, a table so that I could do my work, concentrate okay. on that. Because uh, for, it's difficult. How do you make a good photo? You know, that is, you cannot, you don't know when you push the button. That is, has to do with concentration and also a will to take a good photo with, with concentration. And that's, how do that's, you, yeah. what do you mean by will? Um. Well, I went to a show and, with an idea in my, in my, my, in my to, to take the best photo of this David Bowie or Roxy Music. Tonight, tomorrow, somebody else can make a better photo. But tonight, I will do the best one possible. And of course, that didn't work out all the time. But that was my the way my the way I. So your idea of excellence, or your idea of what a good yeah, what, what is a good photo to you? Yeah, that's the decisive moment. It's not. <laughs> it's a bit cliche, or it's a big big cliche. But that's composition and the, and the moment. Composition is part of the decisive moment, you know. So you you have you see everything, and and if, when it's moving, it's getting more complicated. That is that uh, the motivation was gone in a certain okay. way. I came home from, from a show uh, of. Let's say Bowie again, and the photos I had were not as good as I already had taken one year before. So, and then another thing is that once I went to a concert and forgot to take my films with me. So, then you think maybe I start to think about something different. Mm. <laughs> and that's what I and Was it uh, extremely intense? I mean, because the, the photographs, you can see they're really in their moment, and you're obviously having to tune into that to capture that moment. Mm -hmm. Was it very tiring to be going to all these concerts? Well, that's, for me, it depended on the, how much I did like the music. And, uh, 
uh, if I really did like the music, I remember that there was so much, so hard working that after one hour taking photos, I had to sit down and <laughs> to be like, like I did a mar marathon or so, mm -hmm. which it was not every concert, of course. Sometimes I didn't do the whole concert because I just didn't like it. So you had some of your own personal um, taste did come yeah, into Yeah, yeah, and it's not hard rock, but um, and melodic music, blues, um, and also the, the, the person, for instance, Lou Reed is one of my favorites, and, well, and, and more. But, uh, and, and some of the photos you have of Lou Reed are, are really, really amazing. You really capture mm -hmm. sort of a, a pinnacle of, of his yeah. uh, presence and, uh, and as a performer. Um, the, the shows were really very good, very exci exciting. But the interviews was very difficult to take photos of him because he didn't very much cooperate. He was he played yeah, the bad guy. He, he played the bad guy, you know, it's quite funny. He just acting not to cooperate. Okay. He's a very nice person. <laughs> but he decided <laughs> I'm not a nice person and that's what the way he so behaved. Did a lot of these artists have personas that they put on yeah, uh, yeah. and then I would be different at home? Can you can say Mick Jagger is able to switch Mick Jagger on and off, you know. You see him, he's Mick Jagger and then one second later he's just a normal person. It's interesting. Oh, that must also be quite, <laughs> quite tiring, but maybe it comes naturally. Yeah. to them as performers. Yeah, um, great actors, and David Bowie as well. Huge charisma, which is also interesting to, to watch and to, to experience. And, and very, well, of course, everybody knows that David Bowie is a great actor, but that's what he is. I mean, not just a good actor, but amazing. Mm. <laughs> and you saw yeah. that actually in his, uh, before he died, the album he put out, mm -hmm. when you see him in the music videos, you know, he's, uh, he's almost playing his own death. Yeah, I yeah. mean, that is like, you know, you yeah, act yeah, your own death really just before. See. Yeah, and he wrote it himself, life. you know. That's, I mean, he, that's also, he knew it and, and that's what, what he did. Yeah, that's, that's uh, yeah, he was genius, yeah. I can say, yeah. Um, one of the things I always, when I, when I look at the photographs is, um, I often look at the eyes of the artist, mm -hmm. so it seems like, you capture a moment which is very pure. Yeah. Um, so uh, even though they may be very loud, extrovert people, it's quite. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think um, it's a kind of in, in intimacy, which in the photos, if you go through the book, um, th that's one of the something that that is you see. It's, there is a lot of intimacy, in which is mm -hmm. in a way strange because, as I said, I'm. I did not connect very much with the, the artist, and I'm a shy person. So, why this is, has to, somebody said, yeah, that's because you you did hide, and they didn't dare, they didn't care how to behave, and she could show the, the real person real more sense. than than. But I don't know. It's, it's complicated, but maybe you're able to create that space for them. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay. Um, moving on to the next question. Um, so, we already talked about your legendary photograph of John Coltrane, um, but the other thing that's obviously really important and I think was an important milestone for you was when Neil Young chose um, one of your photographs yeah, as his in, yeah. uh, cover for Tonight, yeah. Tonight's the Night. Yeah, that's, How did that uh, happen? That's, uh, the story is that uh, I went, we went to London, the journalist, and, and I, to do uh, the show, tonight's night show, which was a very uh, emotional thing, uh, and it's actually one of his, his best uh, records, people say, and he made a lot, almost 30 by now, now nowadays. And uh, there went something went wrong with the technique, so the, we went back to Amsterdam. I, I developed and printed the photos, developed the film, printed the photos. And the journalist decided to go back to London to do the interview again because he had, the, the, there was no sound. And, and he took my photos with him and gave, gave them to Neil Young. And, that's, uh, and he, he liked uh, the photo of course, it's, and that's his personal choice, which is also quite typical for Neil Young as an artist because if you look closely at it, the, the photo is, is uh, 
special, but the technique is very uh, high contrast. And a, a manager or the record company would usually not use that photo, but it, because it's New York, he, he decided, you can see, it's quite clear that I want this photo, and that's my decision. Yeah. And so, yeah, so that, that's how it worked. Because the photograph itself is really coming out of the darkness, sort of like a, almost like a, yeah. sort of like a Jesus figure or yeah. something. What, what do you think about this photograph? It's, it's uh, special. And, as I said, the, the two of his best friends died uh, um, um, overdoses and so on. And, the, and the, the concept was really special. The whole tour was, was very emotional. And in London, the, the audience, uh, they, they really uh, loved Neil Young. So there was a very sp special atmosphere. And, and he, more than I, he, he must have, have thought this is... This is uh, Good, uh, good, good uh, uh, view. This is the right feeling mm. I have of this uh, experience. So that's that's uh, <laughs> that's nice. That must have made you feel uh, extremely proud. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. That's right. Um, the other thing that I wanted to ask you about is, of course, you've. Done, I made a book about David Bowie, um, and you have an extensive archive actually of photographs of Bowie. How did yeah. you how did you first meet him? Uh, I met him in, in London, also in uh, no, it was 73, yes. I was there to do, uh, I was at the Air Recording Studios, to, I was there to, in London to uh, do, uh, had an assignment for Roxy Music, they were recording there. and. And uh, it happened that David Bowie was also recording, so I met him in the can canteen, and we talked. And, and, and but I didn't dare to take photos of him because uh, if I, the management could have kicked me out, and then I couldn't take photos of Roxy music. So I didn't take photos, and we we talked a bit. He was uh, actually quite insecure, and uh, he was just experimenting with some some. And, or sound, I don't know. But then uh, the next year, I, I, it was 72 and 73, I, I did a City Stardust show and I went back to London and uh, made photos of that. And then the next year, he came to the Netherlands. And, and well, I saw him uh, altogether five times more and had so much work that uh, we could make a nice book of. Photographs. Did you have any uh, memories when you were with David Bowie that kind of stick with yeah, you? Yeah, that's, that's uh, again about uh, charisma and mm. and it's, uh, after when making the book, I was also um, I did watch uh, interviews he did on YouTube. You can find a lot of and then you see how special it is. And he's very intelligent and he has a lot of humor. And it's interesting to see a lot of interviews during the time in the 70s uh, to see how he behaves and what he says and, and the witness to f find out uh, about his character. Fabulous. Um, what would you say is your favorite photograph from the Avatisapa series? There's not uh, in particular one photo I like but usually the portraits are the, the, f from the Photos I like most, that's usually portraits. For instance, the Keith Richards interview, mm -hmm. the portrait I made during an interview in Brussels in 76. And that's an interesting situation, is again, because uh, it is Rolling Stones, Keith Richards, you're a bit more nervous than usually. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you realize that every, every moment you can be kicked out, and the management comes in, so this, this will do. Get, get off, get away. Or uh, Keith Richards himself uh, realizes what I'm doing here. I don't want, I don't want to do this. Fuck off. You know? <laughs> <coughs> and so it, it, you start and you don't know where it will end. And this it, it went along quite well. I took a lot of photos. Um, 
Yeah, you have some where his his child is is on the yeah, road. Is yeah, that his child? Sure, sure, yeah. Who he's uh, not doesn't look like he's he was, taking care of. Um, yeah, he, <laughs> he, uh, he in his in, in his biography he published a couple of years ago. He he writes that in this period of, of time he was so in such a bad condition and paranoid, you can say that he was sleeping with a shotgun under his pillow. And uh, his, his son uh, was the only one who could wake him up at four o'clock in the afternoon. Was allowed to wake him up to to do sound check or so or to interview. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, you must have seen a lot of people, you know, at that time, especially when people were doing a lot of drugs, psychedelic drugs, and yeah. so on. Was it? Mm, how yeah. was it being around all that energy? Were you? Were you ever uh, asked I, I to take some? Or? No, no, I'm, I'm, it's sex, drug, and rock, rock and roll, and no drugs for me. Um, but um, for me, it's, it was more also it's a profession for me, you know, it was kind of hard working. Uh, I did at the time three, four uh, shows a week, and that's, that's, you know, you come home at 12 o'clock to process the film. And you go to bed at half past three, and the next day you have to, to you know, there's another interview or show. This was quite hard working, and that's what I re remember more than the parties. The, okay. the, they were parties, of course, but uh, I, yeah, at a certain time, you know, after the show there might be a party, but I have to go home to co continue to do my work. Because how often would they have to come out in the newspaper then? How, how I, did I did uh, work for a bi-weekly uh, music magazine that I was, uh, for a couple of years I was first photographer, so I covered, uh, more, more, that's why I could do A to Z, because I covered everybody who came along or we went to the artist himself. Um, but I, as a, I worked as a, I had a contract, but I was worked as a freelance photographer. So also did uh, daily newspapers and also magazines and glossies. And so on. so was it quite quick deadlines? You had a day. Uh, yeah, two I, days? yeah, and then you know, the, the, at that time it was not digital. So the, the, if the papers printed, it takes a, a couple of days for. So you have to deliver. The, Photos. Um, another question I have, which I had, I just sort of realized was, um, so Anton Corbin is now quite a household name as a rock photographer. Yeah. Um, but actually, <laughs> That's a good you know, expression. he. <laughs> household. <laughs> but yeah, he learned he, from, he, I, from you originally, in that, uh, right? In the time I had uh, worked with assistants, and he, he used to be uh, my assistant for almost a year in 74, 75. Yeah. So would you say his style um, in his No, no, he has his own style. He's, it's quite different, actually. Um, what would you say the differences are between your work and his? Um, that's, yeah, that's... Well, f first of all, but it also goes for Anton Corbijn. Um, I'm, I'm a, a journalistic type of photographer, you know, not a studio. I did work in the studio. But, and I had a studio, but um, that was not my specialty. And in a way, so the difference is that um, a studio photographer directs his work, you know, he decides what's happening and how the picture will be. Uh, and the reportage, the journalist type of work, that it's happening and I take to my shots. And I think Anton's work is a bit in between. He's also directing. Actually, he's a movie director now as well. And not so much, uh, um, not so much a journalistic type of work, but it's, it has its journalistic feeling as well. I think. Were, was it very competitive between the different photographers, or? Were you all encouraging each other? And, no, you know, no, that's not it? how it works. You are, you have, you are competitors. Yes, and you, you know, you need, you need your assignments and so. Of course, it's, uh, it's uh, competitive for us. Were some, were you guys sometimes at the same concerts and competing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You, 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 it's often, especially with press uh, reception, well, it's still the same situation. 
your the Bowie photos I took in the in the TV studios in uh, Helfersen in uh, the Netherlands. We were with eight photographers, and <laughs> that's uh, fortunately, fortunately they are not all. I mean, there is some quality difference, but you don't know that at the time that you're working there. But you need your elbows. You know? <laughs> 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 um, what would you say was the hardest um, photograph to take? The Rolling, I remember the Rolling Stones. I had to, I had to, uh, you, you get, you know, there's all when you do a concert, there's always somebody who says you're not allowed to take. For, actually, all the time, that, that's a part of the work. That's maybe one of the reasons I like photography. There's always somebody who says you're not allowed to take photos. <laughs> And, and you, especially in this time, the, in the beginning, of the security, the, the, now the security people are professional. They know that they're not there to fight, you know, they're there to, to, to control the, the audience. But at that time, they like to fight. So you, if you, they say, go there and do this, and then I, I didn't do that. So that was quite. Yeah, that was so another part. Physically you, yeah, or, or sometimes the, the audience doesn't like if you're in front of them, and you know they, they don't like that. So you get you get from all <laughs> all the directions you get people that are trying to get you away. To, to get Whilst you're trying to get field. a good shot. But, yeah, yeah. So that's sometimes. I remember a Bowie interview. The, 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 there was a very low stage, like 50, 50 yeah. Centimeters, and I was there, of course, low as well. So I could use wide-angle photos, which was very special. But the <laughs> the girls behind me were so excited that they started to climb on me. So I had to <laughs> I had to get rid, <laughs> rid of them. And and you know, if you 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 have to the camera should not move if you take photos. <laughs> so it was not easy. Okay, so many. Um Quite a few challenges you're faced with. Yeah. Um, so you talked a bit about being up close to them, um, though you said you were not friends with them, but you know you, you still were in very close proximity. At that time when you were taking photographs of them, did you already know that they were going to become the legends they no. are today? No. From some artists, especially the ones you like, you you realize this is this is this music will last, you know. But you. you it's, you cannot imagine that now we are 40 years later that this music, and even with younger, uh, I, I hear that people uh, who are 20 years old now listen to this same music. It's, it's having some sort of revival yeah, at the moment. Yeah, it goes on. And you cannot, uh, that's, uh, you, you cannot imagine that. Also that there is a big demand for my work now. I could not imagine that, of course. Well, I guess also today, the artists, everything is very staged, even though, of course, there's, some of them are very charismatic and talented, but everything is so polished, and it seems like here at this time, it was much more raw and uh, real and... Yeah, um, but it already changed. I started in 69, and, and then at that time, everybody had to learn uh, the, the, the job, the, the, the set they made their first albums, the artists, but the management also had to learn how to manage, and the, the promoters and the, the, the press was were all new magazines. The, I myself had was f taking photos, but also learning, of course, and, and improved my work. And that was the atmosphere. But a couple of years later, then it got more professional, and uh, you know the light uh, installation was so big that that you so you got better better. Uh, Lights, for instance, and, and every, everything became more professional. That was yeah, already in the, in the, the seventies, but way. only in, when after I stopped in the eighties, they decided that you. Even I remember you had to give your film to the management, and they decided which photo, which ah. I, that was not. Uh, so you didn't. That, that was not in my time. So your time, you selected. Yes, of course. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Um, there's a lot of kind of uh, crazy stories um, that we've heard from you and read about you, of you taken by Mick Jagger himself using your camera, which yeah. is just, I mean, mind-blowing. It's such a great story. <laughs> um, are there other stories like that where you tell them to people and they're like, no, that, that simply can't be true? 
Hmm. That's it's difficult if you put it this way. Um, Mm, yeah, I don't know. That's that's uh, maybe you uh, to wait another this out. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, let's move on to the next question. So, okay. So we discussed a little bit um, that you when you quit uh, photography. Mm -hmm. Is it eighty three? Eighty four? In eighty three, yeah. In seventy eight, all of a sudden, kind of fifty punk groups uh, showed up and that was the moment that I thought maybe some, somebody else is going to do those uh, 50, didn't 50 really groups. I didn't, <laughs> like, I didn't like the music at that time, now I, I like it more, but uh, so I, was, I started to, to travel photography um, and in 83 I stopped completely. Yes. So what, what was it like having had this kind of um, pretty crazy already photography career that you'd had mm -hmm. and then to do because you changed to do something totally different yeah um, yeah did you did you find that you ever missed um taking photographs yeah. or did you i i i as they say i started to be an entrepreneur but that's a different type of creativity and actually maybe i was a bit too creative in that the best thing is in business to focus on one thing, and I, I think I started in 10 or 15 companies at the time, <laughs> which is not a very good idea. And I, actually, I was a book publisher for almost 10 years, so that has some continue to continue to be in it. Uh, and in 2005, I went to my, my archive and I uh, organized an exhibition. And so what, what, what was the thing that made you go through your archive? In yeah, that? a kind of a feeling it's there and how, how I should... I had a look and I realized mm, it's not so bad. And <laughs> I, I had a friend who was a, um, a photo edit, editor. Uh, and she helped me uh, going to my work and... Uh, inspired me to, to, to do something with it. And after the exhibition, which was successful in 2005, uh, somebody asked, um, how important is it for you? Maybe we make a book. Mm -hmm. And it took two, then I started to scan my work for the book. And it took about two years to, to, wow. to make it. And I saw it and I thought, well, when I started already to take photos again with a digital camera. But it's that's completely it's crazy that you have images of, I mean, photographs of these yeah, people just yeah. lying yeah, that's, in uh, your uh, uh, apartment. You should have done that before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Uh, and uh, and did the, the fact that you had been working as a book publisher, I guess that must have yeah, helped a lot. Yeah, you and it's also the, the graphic industry, it's also the word graphic in it, photograph, uh, graphic industry. That uh, must be... Uh, that's okay. Anyway, because um, you published um, Abba to Zappa yourself, um, uh, partly. Yeah, there was a publishing house, but yeah, I did it uh, more or less uh, myself. Yeah, and and I made some <coughs> books uh, last after a Bowie book and um, Patty Smith's book, and um, not long ago a book about Bob Marley, and I'm now working on. Uh, Rolling Stones book that will be oh, out in wow. November. And I would like to make a book about Lou Reed, but I'm not sure if it, that will happen, but th that's another project. How does it work when you make a book, for example, about an, a living artist, um, say Patti Smith? Um, do you contact the artist uh, regarding mm, no, the, no. or you can just no, it, say it's, you uh, own the photograph? It's, as long as it's not merchandising, you're, you're, it's, uh, it's uh, um, a free, um, uh, you have the right to, uh, it's, it's seen as artist or journalistic type of work. So as long as it's not merchandising, you, are, you, you don't need to, to ask them or to ask the management if, it's, if you're allowed to publish a book. So that's not an issue, fortunately. And do you ever send copies of the books to the artists so that they get to see mm, it? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> no. Okay, and um, so after these uh, book projects, um, 
this really, I mean, I guess that helped your work reach even more people because these are being sold online, I know, by Dutch, by Idea Books, and, you know, yeah. you said you did a run of, is it 6,000 copies? Of, of the, uh, yes, that's right, yeah. That's really impressive. Yeah, but it's, there's no text in it, it's only in English and, and, and afterwards. And uh, it, I, we have, I have a feeling that there's maybe 10,000 people that worked or more in, in the scene, uh, you know, uh, management, uh, promoters, uh, journalists, uh, everybody. That's a lot, of, and it's their life. If they mm. if they go through it, that's it. okay. This is this is what happened, and that is uh, we believed in it. Uh. But you also uh, at the exhibition, I'm guessing, in, in all the exhibitions, you must have a lot of people from that generation. We had that experience here at yeah. the Lotus Gallery yeah. that um, people, you know, they were either at one of the concerts, or it's one of the their heroes. You know, they really feel a personal connection yeah, yeah. Uh, to this time as well, especially of that generation. So it seems to it means a lot to people, and it's a yeah. sort of nostalgic or um, mm. a longing for maybe that time as well. Yeah, and of course I understand that. But I, <laughs> that's about the, the artist, and for me it's more about the photography. If they, mm. but people do also. That's it helps me in a way to, to sell the photos. The people um, want to have a photo of David Bowie, and mm. of course that's perfect uh, with me. Uh, but I prefer if they buy the photo because they like the photo. Of course, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it should go hand in hand for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, what would you say the reception? Having this, this is your first exhibition in Asia. Yeah. Specifically, here we are in Hong Kong. Would you say the reception is not different? in Asia actually? I had an exhibition in Tokyo. Okay. It's so also Asia. It's, it is. Yeah. <laughs> so first time in Hong Kong. Would you say the reception is different yeah. than anywhere else? It's or? it's uh, yeah it's it's very it was it was very uh, very positive. People really were positive, and also I could I could feel that they really like it. And and uh, appreciate it to 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 see it. Yes, yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. And how many exhibitions is it now you've had with from Abba to Zappa? Do you know quite a lot, lot, quite a lot in, in Paris, in London, in Tokyo, in Moscow. I had a huge mm. exhibition, fifty thousand, fifteen thousand paid people. It was a wow. commercial gallery, yeah. and, uh, and that. Yeah, that was uh, also that was also a very very good reception. Um, yeah. And so, what's next? Um, you're turning seventy five next yeah. year. Yeah. Which is amazing. Yeah, I, I use this so uh, this <laughs> event to to kind of uh, force to have more more exhibitions, you know, to celebrate my my birthday. But uh, maybe this Rolling Stones exhibition I will do for certain. Uh, um, yeah. And um, am yeah. I correct that you're going to be making a new version of the I'm working on, on, a, on a new version with new photos I, I scanned and have not been published yet in a book. And, uh, um, and also color in it and, and, te and text. Uh, that's how that's uh, it's in the new pro project I'm working on. That's very, very exciting. Good luck and thank you, um, thank you very much. Okay, thank you too, because I really enjoyed being here.